Welcome to another video from explainingthefuture.com. This time I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence or AI. In the 2020s, AI is likely to be the technology that has the greatest disruptive impact. So should we welcome the coming of AI or should we worry about its implications? There are three big ways in which AI is likely to impact our work and domestic lives. The first of these has to do with the development of new computing interfaces. If we look back across history, we know that early computers, those built in the 1940s and 1950s, were very difficult to use. They often didn't even have a programming language. You had to flick switches on the front or put jacks into panels to, to put the, the program into the computer. But then we got the development of low-level programming languages, high-level programming languages, and then eventually graphical user interfaces like Windows on a PC, and eventually the World Wide Web on the Internet. So over time, computers have got easier and easier to use, more people have been able to use them because of improved interfaces. And I think that's the first really big thing we'll see with AI. AI will make it possible for more and more people to use a computer in a more fluid fashion. And we could already see this starting to happen with the development of smart speakers and digital assistants, things like Alexa and Siri and, and the Google Assistant. So people who can't use a traditional computing interface, providing they can talk, they can talk to a smart speaker, they can hear the computer talking back again. So I think the development of voice interfaces in both directions is a really important thing with AI. It'll make it easier and easier for people to interface with a computer. And not just with a computer. So, for example, the development of autonomous vehicles is clearly dependent on the development of an AI to drive that vehicle. And as soon as we have autonomous vehicles, fully autonomous vehicles, probably around the late 2020s, then anyone will be able to get in a car and drive anywhere. You won't have to know how to drive, you won't have to have the skill or the physical ability to control the vehicle. People will be empowered by AI because it will offer this new interface to all kinds of technology. So AI is going to have a lot of positive implications. More people will be able to use computer systems and access organizations that use those systems and access other technologies like vehicles. However, the fact we're going to have these sort of interfaces means that more and more information about us, about, about ourselves, is going to be stored by, the, by these systems and used by these systems. Most of the AI interfaces coming into existence right now are cloud-based. So you've got companies like uh, IBM, and Microsoft, and Google, and, and, and Apple, and Amazon, who are basically taking dumb devices, smart speakers, they send a stream of data out to the cloud, out to their data center, it's interpreted, something is sent back again. And that is a model, that cloud AI model is growing very rapidly. So although AI will give us better interfaces, more means of interacting with computers and organizations, it will mean our data is being processed out in the data centers to these big companies who are going to get more and more powerful. So that's the, the balance we have to consider in terms of AI and its pros or cons in terms of interface. Interfaces will get better, but at the cost of certain big companies knowing more and more about us, having potentially more control in our lives. Many people are worried that the development of AI and associated robotic automation will destroy human jobs. And I think this is a very real, a very legitimate concern. Clearly, if a task can be done by an AI that's currently done by a person, then that person doesn't have necessarily to do that task, and that could lead to unemployment. Now, if you read the business press on this, all the business analysts, the gurus from the business schools, they've written a lot of papers on this subject in the past few years. Here's just a few of them. I've been reading all sorts of these papers. And um, they basically try and stick to the line that we shouldn't worry too much because AI isn't going to automate all of our jobs. It's going to augment lots of jobs. So they will tell you that people's jobs will be enriched because the bits of a job that people don't like doing very much, the drudgerous stuff, the repetitive stuff, that'll be done by AIs and robots, and people will be left to do um, the, the other part of the job. And that's a lovely theory. The problem is, all of these sort of papers cite examples, cite case studies, where they say what will happen is people will start working with artificial intelligences, with robots. So there'll be teams of people and technology. And they say they give examples of these, and these teams are far more productive than they were before the AIs came in. Um, but they also have less people in them. So although they can make a case here, they do make a case, all the business school academics seem to make this case, that actually we will not see a loss of jobs because of AI, we'll see enriched work. The practicalities of their own research 
very much suggest what will actually happen is there'll be some people with enriched jobs and some people no longer having a job because people won't need as, as, as many people to do that work in the company. Now, the other thing I think we should be very aware of in this is whichever way you, you believe this sort of study, and whichever way you go with the studies that say 20% of jobs will be automated, 30%, whatever, the focus tends to be on the job. And I think that's actually missing the point. My guess is very, very few jobs are going to be automated in the next 10 or 20 years by AI or robots. Maybe only 1 or 2% if that, because most jobs have got parts in them which are extremely difficult to automate. However, my guess is in the next 10 or 20 years, a large proportion of work tasks will be automated. Maybe 20% of tasks currently done in jobs will be automated in the next 20 years. By which I mean parts of jobs. So many people will discover that bits of their job will be able to be automated. For some people, it'll be a few percent of a job. For some people, it'll be 50, 60, 70% of a job. But the big implication of this is, we're not going to face a situation where sort of 20% um, of people, their jobs will be automated, 80% of people, nothing happens. That's not the world we're heading into. In the 2020s, we're going to find that maybe 90% of people will find some of their job is going to be automated or augmented, depending on how you look at it, by AI and robots. And therefore, all of us are going to have an implication as work is restructured, and we're all going to have to learn to work with AI, to work in new ways, to work in a world where we are sharing the workplace with intelligent technology. And that's a fundamental challenge that will happen to us all in the next 10 years. In addition to having an impact on interfaces and employment, artificial intelligence could have fundamental implications for the future of the human race. Now, in this respect, some people have sounded some very serious cautions. So, for example, Professor Stephen Hawking has said that it's dangerous developing artificial intelligence because future robots and AIs could out-evolve us, they could wipe out the human race. And in a similar vein, Elon Musk keeps raising this concern. He says that developing AI is like summoning the demon. And I do get what they're saying. They're basically saying in evolutionary terms, the most intelligent species always wins, always rises to the top of the tree. Right now on planet Earth, human beings are the most intelligent species, but if we create AIs and robots more intelligent than us, they may take over. Having said that, having understood that argument, I don't think that's where we're headed. I think artificial intelligence, AI, is very, very different to human intelligence, HI, as I've discussed recently on my Explaining Computers channel. I don't think we're creating a technology that is going to have intent, consciousness, that's going to get up in the morning and decide to do things like um, wiping out the human race. I think it's far more likely we're creating a technology which is complementary to ourselves. Human intelligence and artificial intelligence working side by side to achieve things to, if you like, almost mutual benefit. And I will go further than that. I would suggest that without artificial intelligence, we are probably doomed uh, because of all the complexities and the challenges we face. In other words, if we don't create AI, we're probably at least as big a difficulty as if we do create AI. Why? Well, think of some of the things we're having to deal with, and things like climate change. We are passing laws, we've got things like the Paris Agreement to try and deal with that to reduce emissions. That probably will not be enough. Uh, we will almost certainly have to do big macro-scale engineering solutions to deal with things like climate change. Taking greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere at enormous scale, putting solar sails in space to shade the Earth so less sunlight hits us and we don't get, get as hot, we don't warm us as quickly. Those sorts of projects will require levels of intelligence and complexity management well beyond human capabilities. We will need AI to help us to achieve those things. If we are to keep living with sort of 7, 8, 9, 10 billion people on this planet with our limited resource base, we're either going to have to go out into space and find new resources, human beings are not well equipped to go out into space, uh, AI and robots are, and or we're going to have to use resources more efficiently here on Earth. We have to improve our logistics, our recycling, produce less waste. We know already AI is very good at those sort of optimization issues. And AI is very good at dealing with human health issues. So in the future, we are going to face issues like a, a global pandemic. That will happen. We face the issue of antibiotic resistance. By the 2020s, routine surgery may be impossible unless we can find lots of new antibiotics or new me medical methods we don't currently know of. Where they like to come from, they like to come from the development of AI. 
already you can see notable people in medicine who are going, look, you know, AI is, is the big way forward. It helps us handle massive new data sets, do sorts of modeling we couldn't do in the past. That will help us to understand our own biology, to reprogram human DNA, to come up with genetic cures, all that type of stuff. So I think for all sorts of reasons, yes, it's, it is potentially dangerous to develop AI, to develop another intelligent species to cohabit with us on this planet. But I think we will need that species to keep ourselves alive. And the other thing to say about this is that I don't think in the future we're going to have sort of human beings over here and AI over there and that's it. I think that there will be a, a spectrum because as we develop AI, as I've just said, we will get better at medicine. We will learn to understand our DNA and to, and to program it to change our own natural biology. And we'll develop organic computing technology and cybernetic technologies. So we'll learn to create enhanced versions of ourselves. My guess is in 50 years time and 100 years time, the most intelligent species on this planet will not be a human being and it will not be an AI or a robot. It will be a hybrid, it will be a transhuman creation. So if you want to fear anything because of the creation of, of, of AI and robots in terms of taking over the world, you should fear the development of enhanced human beings rather than AI. In the 2020s, I think we will enter what I call the cognitive computing age, by which I mean that in the 2020s and beyond, every digital technology will be able to internally possess some form of AI, or more likely will be able to remotely access some form of AI from the cloud. So digital and AI will come together. Um, the future of AI is the future of computing. And therefore, all of the things I've talked about in this video, the implications of AI for the human race, are very significant issues. We don't know the answers to them yet, but we need to start debating them more and more because these issues are going to catch up with us fairly soon. If you want to know more about the future of computing and AI and robots, all that type of thing, you can look in my new book. This is a digital genesis, the future of computing, robots and AI. But uh, now that's it for this video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.